Hi, yes, well, so on to our last lesson for this week, and we're looking at rounding and estimating money. Now, interestingly, we might have done this before when looking at decimals, and actually, it's exactly the same when rounding to the nearest pound, which is what we're going to be doing. Hopefully this makes sense as to why we've done it in the order we've done it in, and actually makes your life slightly easier. There are a few, except, a few interesting points to make a note of. We'll come to those later. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do, I have four amounts here, and I want you to place them roughly, don't have to be exactly, but along our number line here. And then I want you to tell me, if I was to round these numbers to the nearest pound, would they go up to two pounds or round down to one pound? Have a go, pause now, and come back and I'll tell you the answer. Okay, so I've placed mine roughly where I think it goes. And the way we're doing this is purely working on what we already know of numbers, thinking about if this is one, this is 1.5, and this is two, we're looking roughly at splitting it into 10 gaps and 10 would roughly go about here. One pound and 42 would roughly go here on our number line. One pound and 51 actually is very, 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 very close to one pound 50. So we'd go somewhere here. And the same with one pound 99, very close to two pounds. So we'd go somewhere like here. The next thing I ask you to do is looking at this, thinking about which direction they would be rounded in. So what we're thinking here is we're thinking back to our rule actually what how do we round remember anything above the 0.5 or 5 or more goes rounded up and anything five or less goes four or less down so we've got here this one goes up because it is closer to two than it is to one because there's our midpoint the same with uh one pound and 99 pence would go up one tier away one pound and 42, because it is less than one pound 50, goes down. And the same with one pound 10 will go down. Hopefully you got those right. Okay, so when we're thinking about this, there's a few things we need to consider. The first, what are our rules for rounding? The second is thinking about, is that the same for money? And which rounding is this similar to? I may have already given you a hint there. And what do we need to think of that might be slightly more, slightly think slightly more about when rounding money if we were in a shop? Have a think and then come back. So first off, what are our rules to rounding? Well, the thing we need to think about is how we would do it. So given a number of this, if we're rounding this decimal to the nearest uh, whole number, which is what we tend to be doing. We will look at our target column, which is our ones column. So we underline that. The column below it is going to be a column that tells us where we go. And we need to remember if we're going five or more, we're going up, four or less, we're going down. And that's the same rule as we've had right back when we did place value at the beginning of the year, when we came to do decimals, and again now. So in this case, this two will bring us down. Remember, we've got our bounds either side. This two brings us down here. So our answer, if we're rounding this to the nearest whole number, would be 54. Is this the same for money? And the answer is simply yes it's identical to money and it's very similar to our decimals that we've got here so the most recent rounding we've done with decimals is exactly what we need to remember when we're rounding with money now the interesting thing is why might we have to think slightly more about rounding money if we were in a shop there are some problems when rounding and the main problem is that sometimes if you round down you might not have enough money to buy something. For example, if you went into shop and you only had one pound and you saw something on the shelf that was one pound 20 pence. Now in your head, you might say, ah, that's okay, because rounded down, that's one pound and I have one pound. But in this case, that's not the 
not right because you don't have enough. So it's just something we need to think slightly more about when we're thinking about money, especially in real life situations. We have to think about whether or not actually rounding down is feasible in this case, or whether or not we're safer to round up and then know we've definitely got enough. Okay, so hopefully you're quite happy with rounding um, money as it's very similar to rounding decimals. And I'm not, you will practice some at the end of the lesson, but I'm not going to make you do some now. What we're going to look at is a much more real life situation that we can think about that might help us see why this is actually useful and why rounding decimals is a useful skill to have. So I've got two questions here. I want you to have a look through these two questions and see if you can work out your answer using your skills in rounding to see if you think you have enough or whether you don't have enough. And approximately how much change they might have at the end. Have a go, come back in a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna go through how I would do these questions and see whether you agree or whether you don't. So the first thing I do is I note down any important facts. So Connor is going to cinema and he has 20 pounds to spend. So the first thing we're going to note down is 20 pounds. It says his ticket cost was nine pound 49. So I'm going to write that one down. And it says the, drink, the snack and the drink bill cost six pounds 66. So I've got all my detail. Now it says expect approximately how much change we have left over. So we're not looking at whether he's got enough money. We're looking at whether he, what change roughly he'll have at the end. So the first thing we need to do with these two is we're going to round them out and actually get to a rough approximation of what they are. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at 9.49. Rounding to the nearest pound, we're looking in this column it's between nine and 10. If we remember, we have five more goes up, four or less goes down. This then goes down. So that is approximately nine pounds. Now this symbol here, you can see it looks a little bit, a little bit like an equal sign, but it's not quite an equal sign. This actual sign means approximately, not exactly approximately. The same with this one, to do exactly the same, six point six six rounding here our bounds are six and seven this one tells us which direction to go it's five or up and it goes up to seven that makes that approximately seven pounds so then i can do my sum i do nine plus seven pounds which equals 16 pounds i need to know how much change so not the amount he's going to pay but the amount of change so I do 20 pounds minus that 16 pounds, and that leaves us with four pounds. Our answer would be approximately four pounds. Now, the, if we had this question, we would have to answer it in this way. We can't give an exact answer because it's asked for us approximately. So really important that we actually read the question we're given. Let's have a go and try the other one as well. So the next one, it says, uh, Delia is going clothes shopping. She has £25 to spend. She buys a t-shirt, which is £10.51. And, and a beanie for £4.47. And a pair of socks for £2.93. She says approximately how much change will she have left over. So again, we need to go through these and work out where we're going to do it to. So this 10, we're going to the nearest 10. This five tells us whether we're going up or down, either one or zero. This five means we're going up to the one. So approximately that is 11 pounds. The same in this one. This is the column we're aiming for. So this column is going to tell us which direction we go in. Either four or five. Four means we go down. So that is approximately pounds. In this case here, we've got two being our target number, so either two or three. Our nine here tells us which direction we're going in, we're going up, so approximately three pounds. We then need to add our approximations up, so we've got 11 plus four 
plus three pound. So how I would do this, I would go four and three is seven, seven plus 11 is 18. And the reason I do it that way is just that it's easier to add these two necessary than this one. Just a very quick mental method. Then it's asking again for how much change you might have left over. So we need to take how much is spent away from how much she has. So if she has 25 pounds, we take away the 18 pounds. And what are we left with? I would bridge up in this case, go up to 20, that's two pounds. Up to five is another five. Two and five is seven pounds. So approximately she would have seven pounds change. One of the things I said has to be, you have to be very careful with when looking at this is whether or not we can round down or we can round up. Now in this instance, because we've got ones here which are very close to 50p, but one goes up and one goes down, this approximation is okay. But if all of them were just under, then actually we might think about actually, do we need, do we have to approximate up in one of these cases in order to make it even and therefore closer to an answer? Luckily, what you find actually in shops is a lot of them are an amount of money and 99p. This is an approximately one pound more to put up to the closest pound, which is the one up. And actually our lives become much easier, but it's still a good um, ability to have. So here are your questions for today's lesson. And I put in a few just to help you show which direction we're going in and how that works on our number lines. Um, and then I put in a question to the rest of those ones we've done before. Have a go, upload your answers to Tapestry, and I will see you.